work on the gardening of 58 North. So in this video I'm going to be sowing some castor oil plant seeds and in the hope to get some nice big plants by the end of summer. This will probably be the first of a few videos that I'll be doing on these plants and, and I'll keep doing updates throughout the year as they get bigger and grow larger. So the date today is the, the 1st of February, it's basically the middle of winter here in Scotland but I want to get these started now. Because, because of my cold climate the growth will be quite slow in these plants once they're planted outside. So I want to get them to a decent size before I put them in the garden. And I can't really put them in the garden till the end of May, beginning of June, because we have frost risk before then. So if I was to plant them uh, in the garden at that time of year, we'd only have two or three months of quite cool summer temperatures and it wouldn't get particularly large. So that's why I'm sowing it now and trying to get it to a good size um, in the conservatory, ready for when it's planted out in summer. So this variety, unfortunately the seed company I bought it from uh, doesn't actually say the variety, which is a shame. But the castor oil plant is basically grown in most people's gardens for the, the foliage. It has these really big kind of palmate leaves and uh, this variety is a kind of bronzy green colour. There's green varieties, reddish orange varieties, red varieties and there's also a kind of a, a bluey green variety as well. It's normally the, the leaves people grow it for. They do have some interesting flowers but they're not so showy. It's, it's more the leaves people go for and it's just to add a bit of dramatic foliage to the garden. So this variety states it can grow to 90 to 120 centimetres, but this species can actually grow to 10 metres plus. It's a small tree where it comes from in the wild. It's native to a uh, southeast Mediterranean basin, all the way over to India. So it's kind of like Persia, Iraq, those kind of areas. So it's used to a really hot climate. Um, I'm not going to be able to get that, that hot climate, which is why I'm going to have to grow it in, in the conservatory first and then get it to a good size outside. So this plant isn't grown very often here in North Scotland. I've seen it quite a lot further south in England. Um, people tend to grow it as a central point to their uh, bedding plants in the summer. So what you'll have is you'll have bedding plants around the bottom to provide some colour on the ground. And this is just kind of a, a plant in the middle just to provide some height and some interesting foliage colour. They don't grow big at all if you just plant them straight outside here in North Scotland. But as I say, I'm hoping to get this as big as I can by starting them off inside. So many of you might know uh, castor oil plants are very poisonous. It's quite an interesting plant actually because this is where castor oil comes from. Castor oil, it's, oil itself isn't poisonous but the seeds that this plant have has are highly toxic um, but they can be processed and made edible or, um, or have the oil extracted from them. But obviously no you don't want to do that yourself because there's so much poison in them that you'll probably end up poisoning yourself. So always take uh, necessary precautions with these seeds. They're very beautiful seeds though. They look a bit like a bean, but they're not actually a, technically a bean. Uh, really nice patterns on them. I'm wearing gloves. You should, if you can, try and wear gloves when you're handling um, a castor oil plant seeds. They're not as toxic as some people might think, but you still want to take all the, the precautions you can um, just to make sure you don't get any accidental poisoning from them. And also every part of the plant is also poisonous, but it's the seeds that are the particularly poisonous part. So these are the seeds, um, they're quite big, so once they germinate it's pretty rapid growth. And one interesting feature of the seed is they have this little lump on the end. So this little lump on the end is actually, uh, has actually got a little bit of nutrition in it. So what it does is it attracts the ants, that little section on the end is edible for the ants. So the ants will take the seed underground, eat the edible part, then the seed then gets planted and can start growing. And that's just one of the relationships this plant has with ants is that um, the seeds can get buried by it. But, buried by the ants because they have that slight edible lump on the end of it. So as I say, although they grow so tall in the wild, uh, I'm not expecting mine to get particularly tall, but I'm hoping to maybe get two meters if I have a decent summer and I can get these to a good size to begin with. So I'm just gonna plant these in 10 and a half centimeter pots. They are big, uh, big seeds, so the seedlings are large when they come up. They'll also grow very rapidly. This is a very fast growing plant. And although it does like hot temperatures and, and it grows best in tropical conditions, it can actually tolerate cooler temperatures not too bad, so even though we're going to have colder temperatures in my summer, it's not going to get uh, really sickly and unhealthy, it will just grow slower. There's some tropical plants that just won't grow in Scotland um, over the summer because the cold temperatures at night makes them really quite poorly and ill. But with this plant, the cool temperatures don't bother it, but it just slows down the growth a lot. So all I'm going to do is push this into the soil, and that little lump at the end, that's the bit I'm going to be having facing down because that's where the roots should grow from. So I'm just going to gently poke them into the compost there. Now I'm going to keep these around 20 to 30 degrees uh, in a propagator to get some rapid growth. They should germinate within about two or three weeks, but I think with high temperatures I should be able to get them to germinate in one week. 
Um, what you can do is you can soak the seeds before you sow them. That can also speed up germination. I'm not going to do that because soaking the seeds is a good way of leaching out some of the poisons and I don't really want to have a whole cup full of water, full of toxic water. So I'm not going to soak mine. I'm just going to make sure the compost is nice and damp, have it in a heated propagator and that should be fine for mine. So what I'm doing is I'm planting half of them now. I've got 10 seeds in total. Um, I'm actually short of compost so I've only got enough for four pots at the moment because of coronavirus lockdowns and also the compost I have got is frozen solid as it's now middle of winter. So I'm just going to do four for now which is about half my seeds. The reason I'm doing half now is because I might actually be far too early. If these plants grow too large and I can't keep them in my conservatory and I have to put them out earlier so it, for example like April time they might get damaged by the frost. I can then sow a second lot in March time if these are looking like these ones are going to get too big before it's May. Those ones can be sheltered and get, get looked after at a smaller size in the conservatory just in case these go out too early and they get damaged by any kind of winds or, or frost, things like that. Because these are very rapidly growing plants, I'm going to have to keep repotting them every month and by the time it comes to planting them, I'm expecting them to be at least a metre tall. And so it's going to be a bit difficult with all the other plants in my conservatory to try and keep these growing because they might just get too large for the conservatory basically because I've got lots of other plants to deal with. So that's why I'm doing half the seeds now, half the seeds later. Also it's an insurance policy if we have any particularly bad weather at the beginning of spring. So I might plant them out in May and we get an unusual frost. I can always have some backup seeds. So that's about, this. That's about it for this video. Um, these will be germinating quite soon. I'll give you guys an update. Uh, maybe get a time lapse at the end of this video or in the next update video so you how fast these grow. As I said before, because the seeds are so large, there's a lot of energy stored in these seeds. When the plants come up, they're already a decent size. That gives them a good head start. All their energy from the uh, from that large seed, they can put into a good established root system straight away and also produce nice large leaves, which can then absorb lots of sunshine and grow and then provide it the energy it needs to grow rapidly. So they get off to a good start, these plants, and once they get going, as long as it's warm and, and good light levels and plenty of moisture and, and fertilizer as well, they'll just grow really rapidly. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next, in the next update.